Back when I was shopping for my first FPV setup, trying to figure out the differences between different FPV goggles for me was one of the most confusing parts. And if you don't know what you're looking for, you might look at this pair of $200 goggles and this pair of $500 goggles, and to you, they might look exactly the same. But the truth is that the features that each one comes with are very different. So what is the difference between a $100, $300, and $500 pair of goggles? Well, that's what we're gonna look at today. Now, if you watched some of my videos before, you might have realized that I use DJI's digital goggles, and although I will be touching upon these briefly, this video will mostly be about analog goggles. Because first of all, analog's where you have the most choice, and also if you're a beginner on a budget, analog's probably gonna be the best option for you. So anyways, let's get into it. So first, the two main types of goggles that you'll come across are box goggles and low profile goggles like these. Some of the main differences between them are that box goggles are bigger, Box goggles also generally have one big screen on the inside, while low profile goggles usually have two, one for each eye. Also, because of their size, box goggles are cheaper to produce, which is great because if you don't mind the form factor, you can get a lot better features for less money. However, low profile goggles are definitely more popular because they are generally more comfortable to wear and easier to carry around with you. Some people though swear by box goggles and depending on your face shape, or if you have certain vision problems, box goggles might be better for you as well. But both types of goggles can be either great or terrible, and it all depends on the features that they have packed into them. So let's take a look at some of those. So the most obvious purpose your goggles have is to display video from your drone. So one of the most basic things you might wanna consider is the screen that they come with. First, you'll wanna look at the resolution. Just like when you chose the resolution for watching this video, the bigger the resolution, the more detail you will be able to see. So the choice is simple. You'll want the highest resolution possible. Next, you'll probably want to look at the type of display. And all the goggles I've used have either had an LCD, LCOS, or OLED display. Some of those terms might be familiar to you if you've ever purchased a TV or computer monitor but each of those provide a different quality of image and come at different price points. LCD displays are the most affordable and still provide a decent image, but are a little bit more dull and have less contrast. That's why you often find them on low to mid range goggles. And top of the line goggles will often have an OLED display, which has a lot more vivid colors, more contrast, and just overall looks a lot better. Then there is LCOS, which it falls somewhere in between in terms of price and quality. Unfortunately, it's really hard to show the differences without actually trying on a few pairs yourselves, but as long as you know that LCD is the worst, then there's LCOS, then OLED, and you get what you pay for. After that, you'll also wanna note the aspect ratio. Some goggles display four x three video, which looks like this, and some goggles display 16 by nine video, which is slightly more narrow and shows a bit less information. Ideally, it's nice to have a pair of goggles that can do both and allow you to switch back and forth between the two. I personally like to use four x three video most of the time because it lets me see more, but I always switch to 16 by nine video when I'm filming something important because the framing is closer to what my final image will be out of the GoPro. And it helps me make sure that nothing important will get cut off. Finally, you'll also wanna consider the field of view. And your field of view represents how much of your range of vision the screen takes up, or how close and big the screen seems to be. A good way to think about it is like watching a film in a movie theater. Although the screen has a certain size or resolution that never changes, Depending on where you sit, it will look different. If you sit in the front row, the screen will appear bigger and take up your entire field of view. Your eyes will then have to wander from side to side to see what's happening on each side of the screen, which on one hand makes it harder to see every detail at once, but it also creates a very immersive experience. The further back you sit in the theater, more of the screen will be directly in front of you. It takes up less of your field of view, and it's easier to see every part of the action. When it comes to FPV, this creates a little bit more disconnect though. But when it comes to racing or freestyle, 
Some pilots prefer a smaller field of view to help them see every obstacle more easily and be more precise. Hopefully that made sense. Personally, I like a field of view anywhere around 50 degrees. To me, that seems like a good middle ground, but everyone is different though. And unfortunately, you might not know what your preference is until you try on a few pairs of goggles for yourself. Now, besides the screen, there's one other main component of your goggles, which may be less obvious to those of you starting out. And that is the video receiver. While the screen might get all the credit for displaying the video, the video receiver is what actually receives the video signal from the drone and can be a huge factor in determining how far you'll be able to fly and how clear your video reception is. Pretty much, if you have a cheap video receiver, you won't be able to fly as far and you'll get more breakup in your image. Now, there are other components that play into your range as well. And if you want more tips on how to fly further with your drone, I'll link a video that I made a while back up above but the video receiver is definitely an important element in that equation. Surprisingly, some goggles don't even come with a video receiver included and make you buy one separately. Other goggles like these come with one completely built in where it can't really be replaced. Ideally, I would look for a pair of goggles that come with a good video receiver, but also make it accessible so that you can remove it and replace it yourself as new technologies are developed in the future. All right, so the screen and video receiver are the two critical elements that your goggles will come with, but there are other important features to consider. First of all, antennas. In order for your goggles to work, you're gonna have to attach antennas to them. And you might be surprised that a lot of goggles don't come with antennas either. And even when they do, oftentimes they're very cheap, so I highly recommend buying them separately. I'll leave links down below to the ones I use. And again, if you wanna learn more about antennas, I highly recommend checking out that video that I linked earlier. Uh, but antennas are critical. You can't use your goggles without them. Although some low-end goggles will have one receiver that accepts one antenna, it's way more common to see diversity receivers that allow you to screw on two. With a setup like this, your goggles will continue to switch back and forth between the two antennas, depending on which one is providing the stronger signal. It also allows you to mix and match the antenna types for different scenarios, and allows you to have a more dependable video feed. Some goggles will also have quadversity that allow you to have four antennas, but for most scenarios, two seems to be the standard. Some goggles also allow you to record video to a micro SD card that you can play back afterwards. Now, this is extremely useful even if you're someone who always films with a GoPro, especially after a crash. Sometimes crashes can happen so unexpectedly that it can be hard to remember your drone's last position. If your battery comes unplugged during that crash as well and you don't have a beeper to make noise, finding that drone can be extremely difficult. If you recorded your DVR though, you can play it back right away in your goggles to give you a better idea of where to search. Also, for those of you interested in racing, you probably won't be carrying around an action camera on your drone, so you might want the DVR recording to watch back some previous runs. Surprisingly, a lot of goggles don't come with a power button, and the expectation is that you unplug your battery every time you wanna turn them off. Now, this won't be a deal breaker for most, but it's something that people have complained about in the FPV community a lot. And the power button's just a little bit more convenient if you wanna power down your goggles between flights. So it's nice to have. Next, depending on what climate you're flying in, it's possible that your displays could get fogged up. So that's why some goggles come with a built-in fan like this. The fan can really help eliminate that. On some low profile goggles, you might notice one or two of these adjustment knobs on the bottom and some goggles will allow you to change their focus depending on your vision needs. Now, the range of focus that they'll allow you to change will also vary from goggle to goggle, so this won't be a solution for everyone, but depending on how bad your vision is, this might be able to help. Most low profile goggles though, will have an adjustment slider on the bottom to adjust IPD or interpupillary distance. This will allow you to adjust the distance between the two screens, since everyone's eyes will be different distances apart. Now, besides that, there are other features as well, like the ability to play audio, HDMI in and out, or channel scan, 
as well as some specialty features like head tracking or 3D video. And I'm sure there's some that I missed as well, but the ones that I mentioned previously should cover most of the basics. So now, I'm sure a lot of you guys are wondering, what goggles would I recommend? Well, the way things are priced right now, these are the goggles that I would buy depending on my budget. Now, really keep in mind that these are the goggles I would personally buy if I could get them at the price currently listed. Prices have been all over the place recently, so by the time you watch this video, some might be way cheaper or way more expensive, but definitely keep an eye out on that. But let me quickly go over a few of these options and explain why I like them. All right, first on my list, I have the Eosheen EV800Ds and the EV800DMs. And both of these goggles are the cheapest ones that I would recommend. In my opinion, any goggle cheaper than these will most likely be more of a toy than something that can be used seriously. Now, these ones here are the EV800DMs. And because they are a cheaper goggle, they do have an LCD screen. And it's also 720 by 576 resolution, which is fairly low. Now the aspect ratio is also only four by three. You can't switch it to 16 by nine. And I'm not sure exactly what the field of view is, but it's fairly small, especially when it comes to box goggles. Now these goggles do come with a receiver and the good part is that it's actually decent for the price, but the bad part is that it's completely built in and can't be swapped out or at least if it can, it'd be very difficult to swap it out if you ever wanted to upgrade. Now, since there's two antennas, you can tell that it clearly has diversity receivers and the antennas that it comes with are pretty decent for the price, but I would also swap these out as soon as I had the budget for it. Now at the bottom, they also have a micro SD slot and a record button so you can record your DVR and they also come with a built-in battery, so you don't have to have an external battery plugged in at all times. One cool thing about these is that they extend, making the screen further or closer to you, uh, which can be great if you're nearsighted or farsighted, uh, and these goggles do not have a fan. But overall, these goggles are decent. I actually prefer the EV800D goggles that I used to own a little bit better than these, because those ones don't have the adjustable focus, but they have a much bigger screen and the screen is actually designed to be separated from the goggles, so it can be used as an external monitor as well. I feel that that makes those goggles a little bit more versatile, but I would get whichever ones you can get for cheaper. Their prices and availability have been changing quite a lot recently. Next up are the Skyzone Cobra S and Cobra X goggles. And from the outside, both look similar, but the Cobra S still has an LCD screen, like the previous ones, has a resolution of 800 by 400, which is also similar to the Eosheen's, has the same aspect ratio of four by three, and has similar features like DVR recording and comes with decent antennas. But there are a few things that make these ones better. The first one being a 50 degree field of view. And like I mentioned earlier, that is my preferred field of view. And the screen on these is much bigger than the screen on those. The other thing that makes these better is the receiver. First of all, it's removable, so you can swap it out if you really wanted to. But these come with Skyzone's SteadyView receiver, which is a really, really great receiver and is completely worth the upgrade. Now, I did notice that there is a version of the Cobra S that come with a different diversity receiver, but if you can find the ones with the steady view receiver, it makes a huge difference. They do come with antennas as well, but these are nothing special, so I would recommend upgrading them. And it's also really important to note that these do not come with a built-in battery, so you will have to purchase one separately. To make things easy, you can use the same batteries that you would to fly your drones, as long as they have the bigger connector and not the smaller one. This one is called an X-T60. But then there are the Cobra X goggles, which are these ones that I have here. And they are currently around $250, but you get a higher resolution screen. The Cobra S are around 480p, while these ones are 720p. The Cobra X also allows you to switch between 16x9 and 4x3 resolutions, which is a big plus in my books. 
Next, I own the Skyzone O4L. And these are my main analog goggles right now, and currently they cost around $400. Now, these ones have an LCOS screen, which is better than the LCD screen that the other ones had. It is 1280 by 960 resolution, and they also have switchable aspect ratio between 16.9 and 4.3. The field of view on these is 39 degrees, which is a little bit smaller than I personally like, but you will notice that the field of view will generally be smaller on low profile goggles. My favorite part about these though, is that they have the same amazing Skyzone steady view receiver that the Cobra goggles had. And again, it's removable, so I can replace it with my rapid fire or anything else that I want. Now they come with two antennas as well, but I threw those out right away and replaced them with these. They also have the ability to record DVR, they come with a fan which is great, and like I showed you guys earlier, they have the sliders at the bottom to adjust your focus and the IPD. Another thing to keep in mind is that low profile goggles will also not have an internal battery, so they do have to be powered by an external battery as well. Now on my list, I also included the Fat Shark Attitude V6, which are currently $50 cheaper and honestly very similar to these. But with the Sky Zones though, you just get that steady view receiver, which I'm familiar with and I know I love. The Attitude V6 still seem like a decent deal though. If you wanna go all out and get an extremely high-end pair of goggles, uh, I would recommend the Eosheen EV300Os, which are also very similar to these, but they come with a nice OLED screen and those are around $530. But now, finally, what if you want something that has better quality than the typical pair of analog goggles? What if you want the best image possible and you're willing to pay for it? If this is the case, then you have two main options, SharkBite and DJI's digital goggles. First, there's SharkBite, which is an add-on that can attach to any analog goggles that have an HDMI input. It would also require adding a specific SharkBite video transmitter to your drone, but in return, you'll get a better image quality out of a pair of analog goggles that you might already own. And I think this is a good option for somebody who already owns a high-end pair of analog goggles, uh, maybe doesn't wanna buy something completely different, and is already comfortable making adjustments and tinkering with their drone. If you're someone who's just stepping into the hobby and buying all your gear right now, you might wanna consider DJI's digital goggles. These will provide you with the best possible image quality, but also require a drone that has one of DJI's video transmitters built in. Now, luckily, because of the popularity of these, most bind and fly drones these days are sold in an analog version and an HD version that is specifically set up to work with these goggles. Now, these will add an extra 150 to $200 to every drone that you buy though. And that can add up quickly. Uh, I would say that this is definitely the biggest downside of DJI's system. They definitely aren't cheap, but the quality that these produce is unbeatable. Anyways, hopefully this video got you thinking on what features you might want in a pair of FPV goggles. Remember that all the goggles I listed are just my personal preferences and you might prioritize different things than I do. But either way, I'm really glad that you watched the video until this point. I appreciate all of you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.